Hey, welcome. It's Pam from Ben McFuzzy Lugs, and today we're going to do another live stream of me making something. It's going to be one of these pom pom animals this time. If you haven't already seen, have a wee look in my previous video from a couple of days ago. I showed you how to make this wolf cub, and I know some of you have already had a go at making them, and they look fantastic. Well done. These are actually working out so much better. Than I thought and considering I only got the pom-pom makers on Saturday and only started trying to make them on Saturday beware this is quite addictive I now have a little gang of these guys and I'm going to attempt making this little guy today while I talk to you <laughs> so you bear with me we're going to be trying to make something like this guy um, I'll give you the basic pattern and we'll see how he turns up, which is a kind of a black, well, a dark grey cat with white mouth and chin and little white eyebrows. Um, hopefully that'll work out and we can be doing that while I'm talking to you. Um, so what you actually need for that is obviously some grey fleece and some wool not fleece we're actually using knitting wool this is just really cheap acrylic wool um so you don't have to spend a whole lot on this this is a nice nice easy project um so we've got some some acrylic knitting wool in white so this is slightly natural white dark gray i'm going to use some glass eyes my black ones that i got from amazon if you haven't already seen the review you can check them out there a little bit of black fleece and a needle felting needle okay so we're going to start i've got this pom-pom maker so we're just going to work with it um Okay, so first thing I want to talk about while I'm doing this, now I'm going to do the front of his face while I'm starting here. Um, if you haven't noticed, on Etsy they now have a little, they, they've stated that we can now upload up to 10 pictures on Etsy at a time, which is actually really cool. I know some people are complaining about this, some are not so happy, some are some are not seeing what the big deal is but what this actually means is that if you make your items yourself then you can add some pictures of your process of making them which is really quite cool it gets your customer a better idea of what they're getting and they can really see that it's all handmade and stuff which is is actually quite nice to to be able to do all of that so think of that don't think oh no I've got to do 10 pictures think that really means that your first picture can be a total arty piece where you're you know really kind of showing off showcasing what you can make while you're the later I, you've got later pictures that can really show um like show what it properly looks like you know you can try and color matching or showing its sizes or showing where it would go in the house or anything like that and then you've got your your final picture your final pictures can show how it was made if you're handmade and that's really cool because that means people can get a real good idea of what it you know you are the maker of it right so what i've done i've done a small amount of white this is going to be his nose and his chin and i'm adding some gray at the side but not overlapping the white because I want him to have the top of his nose a little bit of that to be the darker gray okay yeah so definitely when while Etsy's rolled out this try and use the 10 photographs you could have it doesn't have to be show pictures of you making that exact item it can be you know if your process is similar you can have some stock photos you can take up some really nice pictures of you making the item and then just put them in in photographs 
got the same ones all in the in in the last three or four of your photographs it just gives you more options because bear in mind your your shoppers the more that they engage the more that they know that you're a you're actually hand making that item then they're going to love it they're going to love to know what that it's that it's you that's made it you know it's been made specially for them so don't be afraid to engage that way so i'm just putting gray all the way up to the top of his head and then i'm going to work back down what you're thinking when you're making these pom-pom things is that this is going to be your center line so the first things you put on are going to be here and as you go you're making a mirror image as it widens out so it takes a bit to get the feel of where everything's going to go i can't say that i've quite got the hang of it yet but i totally i couldn't find any books or anything in english on how to do this so i just winged it and it seems to be working so far Right, so the other thing on Etsy I wanted to have a wee talk about is um, keyword stuffing um, and how that affects your shop. See, the thing is that most people don't know what keyword stuffing is. It's where you put tons and tons of tags into the title of your item. So you could be like, if you're making a gold ring, then your item title and could be just a lot of keywords gold ring gold ring for wedding wedding ring and you know you could ha use up all of your space doing this just saying all the different tags that you want and at the moment for Etsy this is considered a really good thing um, which is kind of why you'll see a lot a lot of good shops have this just titles that are j total gibberish and like I say for each seat this is not a bad thing but the problem here arises is Google cannot stand this so if you're going to do this then really if you want to feature your shop for Google then you've got to think again about whether that's something you want to do or if you just want to feature it for each seat now most shops get most of their sales from Etsy so it's not a bad thing to to target things just for just for Etsy but if you're ever planning to move off of Etsy and take your customers with you then learning about Google strategies is a good idea and to do that you have to focus on one keyword thing rather than just doing the 20 things you have to say right this one item what I want it to be is wedding ring and that's your title you can say beautiful ring for a wedding or something but you you want to focus in as much as you can on that one keyword and don't keep repeating that you can say ring maybe one more time but not this kind of ring this kind of ring this kind of ring because then google will really penalize you and you won't get seen at all so that's why sometimes you might be doing really well on Etsy, but you're actually your Google shipping and everything doesn't show up at all. I'm just going to add some more white on. I'm just overlapping ever so slightly the grey and then working down with a load more white. And I just want a little bit for his nose and then I'm going to put loads more on make the, the bottom thicker for a nice fat chin so you've got to be aware of that with your with your shops if you want to focus on Google there's a lot of things that are different in the SEO for Google than they are for Etsy and one we trick I would say one we thing to think of is that potentially you know as Etsy always has the way to change things and they tend to over time kind of copy what Google does eventually so you might be thinking that this is a good strategy for Etsy just now but if things stop working they might be changing it to more 
more targeted like Google. So I would think about having some listings that are focused for Etsy and some that are focused for Google and see if you can get some traction on Google. Other things that Google doesn't like is um, things like saying sale, for sale, anything like that. You don't want to put that in the title of your piece because then immediately Google's not going to like that. So just a short descriptive title that doesn't repeat itself too often is what Google's liking, which is totally different from what we're told for Etsy, which is to stuff your title with as much as you can possibly get into it. doesn't really matter if we're repeating our tags. I mean, some people, they just basically, they think of the 13 tags, just write out the tags with the comma in between them, and then they can copy and paste that into the tag section of their shop because then that gives them, they're all kind of optimised, but it looks terrible for the buyer. So it's a balance between what's good for shoppers on Etsy and what's good for a bit of Google. All right, so I've put a load of the white on here, just overlapping slightly with the grey and then filling all the way down to the bottom. And I'm just going to work back up and down um, with a grey to fill in this area mainly. Oh, I nearly forgot his wee white eyebrows. So now, just slightly above halfway up, I've got a good few wines there already, so I'm going to pop on the white. Give that seven or eight turns maybe i haven't figured out what's what's the right number for anything yet like i say it's still learning but we'll see if that works and then i'm just gonna fill in this area with a couple more rows and then just cover the entire thing until it's totally full up so that's really the difficult bit of winding done now. I've just, I'm just filling this all in and then the back of his head is going to be totally white as well. T totally white, totally grey. So has anyone had a go at making these pom-poms, these pom-pom animals? And did you find any books or anything? It was just the, it was a Chinese woman that I linked to in my actual pom-pom tutorial on I think I put it up on Saturday and Chinese or well I think she was Chinese and her work is fantastic it's a pom-pom Shiba Inu however you say them the breeder dog and it just looks amazing you wouldn't believe this is a pom-pom and I saw that and fell in love and just said to myself I have to try this hobby <laughs> so I gave it a go and it doesn't look doesn't look like hers. I don't have quite the control, um, but I was certainly happy with with the results, and I've been keeping doing them <laughs> all over the weekend. So I definitely think this is going to be something that I'm going to be doing a bit more of as well. Okay, so those of you who haven't been to my my Monday chats before, I also do a little roundup of the week the week that was and what we've got coming up for the week in case you're interested so last week on our live stream which was great fun thank you for everyone that joined me that was that was lovely even though pikachu turned out terribly so i'm totally nervous that this this cat's not going to turn out so good either but hey it's all in the fun we'll make mistakes so last week we did we talked about the new features on Etsy Rank, which are well worth checking out. If you haven't looked already, pop over to Etsy Rank. It's a free website that helps you with your, as it says, with Etsy, with ranking on Etsy. It gives you lots of tips and advice. I'm not sponsored by them. I use them. I just think they're fab. Um, and yeah, they brought out some new features. So we had a look at that. And then, as I said, we made the Pikachu Beauty Blender at the time. That was with the Ackling Fibre. 
and then I reviewed the Echoing Fibre last Wednesday and I did my first almost makeup tutorial that was interesting but the Beauty Blender actually using the Echoing to make a Beauty Blender type thing actually seemed to work quite well um, I was surprised it it seemed weird but yes you can needle felt this stuff and it does work to make a kind of makeup sponge uh, yeah so now that I've caught up to about the same level with the gray I'm starting covering the white and then I'm just going to go backwards and forwards across this side until it's full up and remember the more twists you put on the the fluffier your pom-pom is going to be and the the thinner your wool then the more detail you can get in but the thicker the wool the easier the quicker you'll get this done so it's kind of like um if if you wanted to do this with kids although the depending on the age they might need a bit of help with the, the trimming and the and the felting but if you wanted to do this with with kids then you could do it with a much thicker fiber and then you'd have a less less detailed animal or if you want to do something a little more realistic looking then use thinner fibers i think the woman that i saw doing this in the first place i think she was using a kind of cotton it looked beautiful but obviously as i was just trying this to see if it worked i just got the cheapest that I could and had a go at that and it seems to be working out not too badly yeah where did I got to yes on Wednesday we did the beauty blender and then on Thursday I continued with my needle felted dragon series and we did his wonderful iridescent chest I love that word iridescent, I say that too often. Uh, we did his beautiful chest and covered the rest of his body. So he's getting really close. It's kind of scary. I'm going to have to do that, that head soon. Um, yeah, so so that's, that's what we had last week until I got this pom-pom maker. And then Saturday I put up the video of the wolf the wolf cub um so if you've not had a look totally recommend going to have a look at that that's a bit of a different video for me but it was good fun right and so for this week obviously we've got today's chat um i just literally obviously um was just a little quick covering of the the eatsy tips I am planning to make the, the video more properly again from next week. Problem we had, I don't know if anyone noticed, but YouTube's been a bit down for the past day. I'm not even sure if this live stream's working properly, but we have to hope. But yes, YouTube's been down, so I've been struggling with that, trying to get this live stream up rather than making the proper video. But I'll get back into that so we can have the proper Eatsy tips instead of just me gabbing away in the, the live stream. And so for this week, what I've just covered, I'll hopefully do. And then I'll have proper, proper videos from next week. Um, on Wednesday, if you hadn't already guessed, we're going to review this pom-pom maker kit that I got in the mail. So you're getting... You're getting a sneak peek by being in the life again. Um, and just letting you know what I think of it, what's the good points, what's the bad points. Because, uh, well, I imagine by Wednesday I'll have used it quite a bit. Um, the kit actually comes with, I think it's five different sizes of pom-pom maker, which means I've been able to make different sizes of wee, wee animals, which has been nice. Um, so I'll be giving the review on that, what I think of it, is it worth the money, is that what you should be ordering? Um, and then on Thursday, we're continuing on with my dragon, which I say, getting really exciting. Thursday is going to be me covering his wings, totally finishing off with his wings. And then there's only one or two videos left after that, depending on how long his head takes. If I have any more disasters, but hopefully not. But 
but yes, Thursday we're nearly done with the dragon. I'm excited to see how he turns out, but I'm also wanting to get on. I've got so many other projects that I really want to share with you guys that I think you'll be excited over. Obviously, I want to cover some more, more beginner type projects because the dragon is quite fairly advanced to make a big project like that, a bit daunting for, for some people. Although I would totally recommend doing a massive project to get your skill levels and your confidence up because they're not really, if you take it a step at a time, it's not as hard as you think it is. So give that a go. If anyone's making a dragon, I know I've seen on some of the forums some people are making some fantastic dragons, so feel free to share them with me. A dragon is my spirit animal, if such a thing exists, but I, I've always loved dragons, the idea of dragons. Um, I know they're mythological and not real, but I still I love the idea of them. And I know that my dragon that I'm making is not real he's not right um because he only has two legs but that was just what i felt like making i will in the future make a four-legged dragon and show you how to make the the frame and everything for that because that's obviously a slightly different beast um in some ways it's kind of less challenge and it's fiddly because you've got four feet to do and the feet were the some of the most fiddly bits but it's it's easier because four legs are easier to balance on and everything. Trying to get the balance on two legs has been quite fun, a bit of a challenge, but like I say, really quite fun. So what kind of things are you guys making? I totally forgot in the last live stream, um, I had been sent some absolutely beautiful pictures of people's work but I forgot to put them up so if there's anything that you would like me to showcase because some some of you guys like I've been doing this for nearly a decade and there's some guys that are like on their second project and I'm blown away by just how amazing you all are and yeah some people can just seem to pick it up and just get it straight away but also for you know the others of you, I know sometimes when you start and you see everyone else's work and you can get disheartened because yours doesn't look that good. And the advice totally I'd give you with needle felting is, if you're not happy with it, you're not finished it. You know, you can keep on stabbing. That was the best advice I was given as a newbie: is keep. You've got to stab a lot more than you think you do. Um, you're going to get much better looking results if you really spend a good bit of extra time stabbing away. And even if you think that you've that you've done well and it's looking good, there's probably a whole lot more stabbing you can do. I I would recommend that one of the first things you do, or if you're looking to improve something that you can do as well, is to make a ball. Or make two balls and make them both to the level that you would normally make them and then take one of the balls and just sit put a film on or something sit for half an hour or so or even longer and just stab 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 some more and see how much more stabbing you can do because you'd be surprised and a lot of beginners the the cry i used to do it myself you always say what can I do? I've, it's really firmly felted, but it's there's a lot of fuzzies and stuff. Well, there's two reasons for a lot of fuzzies. The first one is you're comparing people's pictures that I used to be looking and comparing pictures, and at the time my fuzzies were about three inches big. They were pretty tiny, all things considered. And I was comparing them to pictures of people's work, and I didn't know some of these people's work was like a couple of foot high so a picture of that a stray hair is going to look a whole lot less of a big deal than a stray hair in something that's three inches you know on scale something small you're going to notice your stray hairs you're going to notice the stab holes all things like that make a total big difference but also, the the other thing is you probably haven't stabbed enough. 
I mean, there's no rules. There's nothing saying a needle felted piece has to be needle felted this firmly. We're just saying if you're not happy with it, it might be that you need to felt it more firmly. Because when the surface gets smoother, you can control the shape a little bit better. And it's going to be more longer wearing as well. So if you're not happy with it, keep stabbing, keep changing. And do you know, even if you go, you go too far and you think you've stabbed too much, you can always take a scissors to it and cut a bit off. It's, you're not finished. If you're not happy, you're not finished. Right, speaking of, I think that'll do for this pom-pom. I'm just going to finish him off and then we've got the moment of truth while I, I cut him open. This is a bit different than any other craft I've been involved in because you don't know what you're getting till we hatch him out. So let's see what this looks like. Just going to this bit always sticks a wee bit. There we go. I'm just going to put the pieces together. And we're ready for this. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so nerve wracking. This is the back, so it's just supposed to be all grey, so that's good. Right, the moment of truth. Did the front go anywhere like what I wanted it to? Oh, so far, that looks like a bit of a nose. See that the eyebrows work. <laughs> I think the eyebrows are quite far up, but that could still be cute. This could still work. I'm going to take a bit of grey to tie this off. I just tie this three times flipping it over so there's wool around the center quite a bit and then tie a double knot there you can tie more or less if you want and then let's try and free him and there we have a pom-pom <laughs> You can, at this stage, just manipulate where some of the fibres are. And then, right, this is the fiddly bit. If you were getting kids to do this, I would totally recommend you helping out with this bit. Is We're just going to needle felt in the nose, which the easiest way i found is just to come in and pull away the bits you don't want and try and pinch in a section of nose like I say this this is the fiddly bit and once you've got say let's say the top pulled into the shape that you like sorry I'm totally hunched over here that's not a great view for everyone I'm just getting right in at the bottom and felting these fibers together it's fiddly to kind of get them all separated from each other and get a start at this but once you've got it started then it's fairly easy You've just got to be quite rough with it. I 
you guys could let me know in the comments if what time is good for a live stream if you're interested in watching things like this in the future i'm trying to get all this settled down i know today it's a bit horrible because youtube is not working properly so i wasn't expecting many of you to be able to pop in which is totally fine i miss talking to you i miss talking to everyone but it's it's nice to get this stream out anyway hopefully this is all working but can you let me know if there's a if there's a good time that would that would be better for a stream because I don't want to miss people. Like I say, really fiddly to start with, just getting all these bits separate and getting into the shape. And I'm just trying to pull out any extra grey hairs that I don't want where they're going. Now, I will spend longer with this later on, but I want to get this moving just now because I'm aware we're live and I can't speed this up. So I'm just trimming all around to get these fibers out of the way, trimming around where the nose is, and that just is going to separate it a little bit more. make the rest of the trimming, make the rest of the stabbing a little bit easier. Now I would completely advise you trimming over a wee bag or something <laughs> rather than just directly onto your table but it's just the best way I've found to do it to let you guys see it. So it's terrible felting on the nose. Like all needle felt and spend a good bit of time on this to get it nice and firm. I was surprised how well the, f the wool fibers actually knit together when you give them a chance. But just now I don't want to be sitting doing this forever while you're watching. But at the same time. I don't want you thinking that this only takes two minutes to do. It really does take a wee bit of time to get that nicely felted. But that'll do for a start. Trim them off a bit and I'm going in to the eyes a little bit more and leaving the centre of his head a little bit looser. aware how long this live stream is getting so I'm probably going to finish this up relatively quickly and then finish properly finish him later because the rest of what to do here is going to be really similar to the wolf cub it is just literally a case of trim 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 until you're happy with what it looks like didn't 
actually realise how difficult it was to try and concentrate on things and talk nonsense all at the same time. But it's harder than you would think. And definitely within reason, the further you trim down, then the thicker and more almost like chenille the fight the the creature is going to become. So when I started this, I was I was afraid to take too much off, and I kept going back and going back and going back. But you can go in quite quite brutally with it, take a bit off. Now, I'm not going to do the ears just now because they take a while. But for, for this cat type thing, the ears were mainly, it was just some grey fleece and I wrapped it around my fingers about 12 times and felted it into an ear shape, some grey wool. Um, and then I put a little black fleece on the top and a little white fleece in the centre. And then you just separate some of your pom-pom bits and felt it in, in there. But we're just going to make his nose and mouth because that's, that's the interesting bit that's different with this one. So I'm twisting off two fairly long pieces of fleece. Now, this won't felt the easiest because his nose isn't as well felted as it should be, but I'm going to make a kind of cross shape for down the nose, because this is more a cat than a wolf this time. Could be either, depending on how, how you work it, but down the nose and then off, off in an X from the bottom, and we're just going to curve up, and that gives him a smile a bit like a cat. Or a teddy bear. This works kind of nicely for a teddy bear too to do this kind of smiley shape. And the same again here. Down his nose. And then carried on in a bit of an X. And then curve it up into a smile along his cheeks. And that's how I make my little cat nose. Like I say, felt, felt, felt. That's a more trim it if needs be. But that's his nose. And for the eyes, we've got these glass eyes. Uh, going to go with the largest size. And now his eyebrows are way up there. But I still think his eyes... Just pop them in. You'd want to stick a little bit of glue around the shaft of the eye before you push them in, but I'm just doing this quickly, which means it's falling out. But I'm just doing this quickly. And you push them right in, and this helps the shape of your animal because that gets the nose ridge a little bit higher and where the eyes are is a little bit lower. We're going to pinch off some wool again and go round the eyes this gives some eyelids you can give it a nice cat's eye shape or if it's not going to be a cat <laughs> any kind of shape that you want but just just to get a bit of contrast around his eyes And it kind of holds some of the the wool away from the eyes a bit, gives it a nicer shape.
and then you just trim and trim and trim until you're happy. Just keep taking wee bits off of him at a time. Actually, without his ears like that, he's a bit like a bit of an otter. Take him up to the main camera. <laughs> I think, I think he's really quite cute. But you can give him ears and he would be a bit more cat-like. I will finish him off. But for now, that's the live chat. been running nearly an hour. Um, thank you to everyone who did make it to join me. I know YouTube's not playing nicely. If you're interested um, in seeing a live stream again, please come along. I'll try and do another one next Monday. But let me know if 4 o'clock's a rubbish time. 4 o'clock UK time. Um, and I can try it at a different time. Thank you for those of you who did manage to join me. Um, I hope it all worked out okay for you. I am at least pleased the little cat worked out. And I'll see you all again next time, hopefully.